What's going on guys and welcome back to WWE Network and Chill where every single week I break down all the content that I watch on the WWE Network as well as on the E! Network. Today is my final review of Total Divas for a while, Season 7, Episode 12, the season finale, Breaking the News. So every Monday for the last number of, God, I don't know what, three or four months, I've been breaking down Total Bellas, now Total Divas. Thankfully I'll get a bit of a break going forward. Um, here on WWE Network and show with the Total Divas and Total Bellas reviews. And I will be back with my Total Bellas reviews. I think in the spring, they said. Season 3 will premiere in the spring. It seems like they always have one or the other. It's either Total Divas or Total Bellas. And the shows are good. And obviously I watch them because I enjoy them. But it's like, good God, give it a break for a few months. Like, it seems like we got at least three or four months until Total Bellas is back. But it's like, good God, like, just let me go six months Without another show coming back. I have OCD, kind of, so I'm like, I have to watch it or whatever. Um, so anyway, this is Season 7, Episode 12, Breaking the News. As always, it will break down the show in um, sections from how the show is formatted. So we have the Miz and Maurice story. We have Nikki Bella and Bree's story. And then we have Lana, TJ, Tyson Kid, and Natalia, their story as well. So with Miz and Maurice, obviously breaking the news, uh, as the title of this show has to do with them, breaking the news of Maurice's pregnancy, which we found out at the end of the uh, of last week's episode, breaking the news not only to Miz's parents, but the WWE as well. So to start off the show, we're in Miz and Maurice's car with them, and there's a bee in the car, and Miz freaks out, which was entertaining to watch. They arrive in Cleveland to tell Miz's parents about Maurice's pregnancy. Uh, they've been divorced for like 20 years. You know Miz's dad by now from WWE TV, from Total Divas. The guy's a fucking gem. The mom, the mom is really nice too. Obviously, they're very happy to hear the no. Uh, they're very happy to hear the news, but uh, they don't know where they're moving yet. They just sold their house. They flipped their house. Whatever it was, I think it was this season. Pretty sure it was this season. It might have been season six. I don't know. Um, but they sold their house. Remember? I think it was season. I think it was this season. Yeah, just a few months ago. So they don't know where they're moving yet. They're selling their current house because it's not you know safe for kids and all that other shit. Because they've had burglaries in the past and stuff like that. They don't know where they're moving yet. So they go house shopping, house flipping, whatever. They find an amazing house in Cleveland. But Maurice is skeptical. She doesn't want to move to Cleveland. She starts breaking down. She starts crying, freaking out. She says she feels pressured. So then Miz promises her, we're not going to move here. Don't worry about it. So anyway, they move to w They go to WWE, to Raw. They inform Mark Carano of the news, the talent relations guy who we've seen way too much of on Total Divas in the last number of years. But they inform Mark Carano of the news. He's very happy for them. And then they go to, um, or, or anyway, so before they go to Vince, Miz says that he wants to be strong for Maurice because if they're both freaking out, it's not going to work. So one of them has to be strong. It might as well be Miz. So they go break the news to Vince. Vince tells them we're going to incorporate it in a storyline. We don't actually see Vince saying this, but it is relayed to us by the Miz and Maurice. So they break the news, obviously, if you can recall, on Raw in front of the entire WWE Universe where they met in the first place. So they let the world know that Maurice is pregnant, that she'll be taking time off to be pregnant uh, for the next number of months. And we find out that Maurice is the first person in WWE history to break the news of a pregnancy in the ring. A real-life pregnancy. We're not talking like fucking Lita here. We're talking like a real-life pregnancy. So that's pretty cool. With Nikki and Brie, Nikki introduces her dancing partner, uh, I forgot what his name was, Edom, something like that, to everyone backstage at WWE. Uh, Brie FaceTimes Nikki while she's backstage, and she says, you gotta go wedding dress shopping, because all you've done so far is set the date for your wedding, but you haven't done anything to plan for it. And then Nikki says, eh, I'm a little bit busy with the, you know, the practice right now and the dancing, so I can't, I'm sorry. So they do a little dance of Raw, I'm not sure if it was a dark match segment, a dark, a dark match segment, or it was something that happened during commercial break. It never aired on TV, but they do a little dance to promote Dancing with the Stars, and then Nikki body slams them. They rehearse for six hours a day, and as you could probably tell, her body's fucking killing her. It's a lot of work, even more so than WWE, I'd imagine. You know, Jericho's talked about it before, Stacey Keebler, so this is nothing new. Uh, Brie and Mama Bella visit Nikki at practice, where's Birdie Joe? But Nikki says, I have no time, I'm sorry, to go wedding dress shopping, and Brie gets a little pissed, so she's like, Dude, if you really want to have a wedding, and you've been wanting this wedding for a long-ass time now, you are doing nothing to prepare for it. But, in the end, after Brie witnesses Nikki doing her amazing dance on Dancing with the Stars, she goes, Wow, I understand now. She has no time for it. She's putting her entire heart and soul into this performance. Let's do the wedding drop, the wedding dress shopping. Let's bring it to her. So they bring her a bunch of wedding dresses. 
in her hotel room. They surprise her and all these other wedding-related items. And Nikki's very happy to see that. And she goes, oh, I forgot how happy I was to be engaged. So I guess it completely slipped her mind. So that's that story. Finally, Lana asks TJ, or Tyson Kidd, whatever, to train with her. And obviously, uh, Natalia being arch enemies with Lana throughout this entire season, is it, it seems like she's jealous. But the excuse that she gives for being jealous or upset that Lana's asking Tyson Kidd to train with her um, is that Natalia says she doesn't know if, she, if he's ready, if Tyson Kidd is ready to get back in the ring yet. If it still bothers him, would he want to go back in the ring? Will he be depressed again? Like, what's going to happen? So Lana visits Natalia's house without her knowing, apparently, um, with the family there and TJ there and Natalia there. So Natalia says to TJ, you seem to be way too excited to train with her. So, obviously, the whole excuse about, oh, I don't know if you're ready to get back in the ring yet. The fact that she, you know, that she says to TJ, oh, you seem way too excited to train with her. It's obvious jealousy. It has nothing to do with she's not looking out for TJ. It might be a part of it. But it's obviously jealousy. Natalia is does a terrible job of hiding that. So, anyway, she looks for excuses for him not to train with her. So, she tells Lana that he has chicken pox. They train anyway, and she's like, that's bullshit. TJ finds out, like, why the fuck did you lie to her about me having chicken pox? So she says to him, Natalia says to TJ, that it hurts me to see you in a suit as a producer for WWE. So Tyson Kidd at this point in the show has been retired for two and a half years, almost three years now, as of this recording. Um, and it, by now, he's over it. He admits that he's moved on, and it's time for her to move on to. I enjoy being a producer. I enjoy training people. I love wrestling. Let me do my thing. So Natalia is obviously more hurt than he is. But again, like I said, and it's all a bullshit excuse. And it really seems that the only reason she said that was because she was jealous that this uh, hot blonde bimbo that she's been arch enemies with throughout this entire season is wrestling training with her husband. So anyway, Lana and Natalia apologize to each other backstage at TV and they seemingly make up for now because they've apologized to each other before and it went nowhere apparently because they were still, you know, on bad terms. They still had that bad blood, so... That was completely null and void. I'm sure this one will be as well. So that's how we end off the Season 7 of Total Divas. So we did get a brief snippet of what's to come on Season 3 of Total Bellas, which I will review when it comes back in a few months. Uh, <clears throat> um, you know, a few different things. The Bella Twins preparing for an in-ring comeback, um, probably culminating at the Rumble from this past week. I don't know what the, what the time frame is going to be, but this show wrapped up, Season 7 of Total Divas wrapped up in the fall and they seem to pick up right where this left off. So probably in the fall of 2017, early 2018, I'd imagine, they tease, uh, you know, a bunch of stuff with the Bella Twins, specifically oh, of the, um, what is it, the marriage, the the proposal with Nikki and John, will it be called off? Will the engagement be called off? I fucking doubt it, but that's the big hook for next season of Total Bellas. So anyway, guys, thank you for checking out my reviews of Total Bellas and Total Divas over the last number of months. It's been nonstop for like months now. Glad to get a bit of a break. Uh, WWE Network and Chill will continue with solely one episode a week on Mondays. On Sundays, I'll just put up some random content. So uh, I'll be done. I'll be going back to just one WWE Network and Chill video a week here on the channel, which is better news for me. I love doing the videos, but I enjoy doing one as opposed to two, and I wanted to review the show, so that's solely on me. But anyway, guys, be sure to like this video, drop a comment, share the video, subscribe to the channel for more daily content. I'll be back next week with another edition of WWE Network and Show, reviewing whatever airs on the WWE Network after Raw this week. All that being said, guys, have an awesome rest of your week. I'm Graham Jason Matthews, and I'll catch your ass down the road.